Hey there, Ultimate World, and welcome to Santa Cruz, California. Our second game that we're bringing you here at the Labor Day Championships. Today we have another college or club championship matchup in 2007. Johnny Bravo took on Sockeye. Sockeye got the better of that matchup way back in the day. Now we have two com very different teams from the early 2000s. Very young teams. Second year installing these offenses. Uh, we have Sockeye just beat Machine 15-13 and they just ended that game. So they didn't get much time to rest. So they should still be pretty warm, pretty fresh. Um, Johnny Bravo was playing Mad Cow. Mad Cow took half on Bravo 8-7, to seven, but that was the most damage that we're, they were going to do as Bravo uh, went, since it's a 13, Bravo, basically Mad Cow didn't score in the second half. There it is. Is what I'm trying to say. All right. So both teams are undefeated today. Sakai still huddled up. Looks like Bravo is going to start out the game with a pull. On defense. This is the first Pool B game that we've shown today. Pool B as the 17 pool. They're going to be playing a game to 13 today. So we're going to be ready to take our half for the first team to get to seven. That's Austin Gregerson with the disc. Player out of University of Arizona. Also played with Barrio in the mixed division. Also on that line we have Jake Jacuzzi Juzak. I believe that's how you say his name. Mm -hmm. Also Tim Morrissey. 17, David Belsheim out there telling his team what he wants done. Number five, Jack McShane. Number 30, Clark Bishop. I don't think David Belsheim is actually on the line. He's just kind of... Oh, just instructing him, I see. Giving the matchups that he wants. A player to watch on this D-line. I'm excited to watch Jack McShane. He runs the offense on a turn. I remember back in the Next Gen Tour in the first game, it was Jack McShane putting up flick huck after flick huck to his deep receivers. When they're not taking the ball deep, he will be throwing it upfield and being the reset, and you'll see a lot of that from their D line if they can get the turn. Sockeye starting out with a line of Kasednar, Wallace, Holt, Caldwell, Titcomb, Raider, and Karlinski. Karlinski with the disc. Kasednar back, back to Karlinski. Middle of the field with Kasednar. Not getting much flow down from the cutters. Lots of poaching in the lane. Kasednar with it. Over to Spencer Wallace. Karlinski up the line, marked by Ryan Farrell. Pit called downfield. Disc will stay with Adam Holt. Excuse me. Disc is going back to Danny Karlinski. Sockeye resembling a vertical stack. Kosednar out in the lane. Looks like there was a violation. Karlinski dumps to Holt. Holt to Wallace in the middle of the field to Titcom. Bravo player signals goal. And Sockeye scores the first goal of the game. That is Exton Titcomb. Yes, sir. 
Or is that Vero? I believe that's X10. Uh, but I would be mistaken. It is, it is Vero. Vero. Rookie on the team this year. Unless they're switching jerseys, I would really have no idea. Phil Murray, up to his usual antics on the field. Most exciting player to watch. It is going to be it is going to be trouble for us here in the booth to have him on the sidelines in front of us. He will be messing with us all game long, I assume. Sakai now with the D-line. That's Joe Sefton, Eddie Feely, Duncan Duncan Lynn Lynn. Reed Koss, Frank Barrick, Sam Harkness, and Tyler Kinley. That pull goes out of bounds. Goes out of bounds well before the brick mark. Josh Ackley is bringing the disc to the middle of the field. Ackley being marked by Tyler Kinley. Ackley's been a focal point of Bravo. Really a staple in Boulder. He played with University of Colorado's Mama Bird. Definitely be throwing a lot of the big throws. Here's Owen Westbrook, puts up the flick to Evan Padgett, number 21. Bravo doesn't have much trouble moving the disc up the field. That pull, not really advantageous for Sockeye's D-line. Bravo moves it around and scores, they tie the game at ones. Quick point from Bravo. You can hear the wind out here blustering in our microphones. It's not coming from one general direction, it's really kind of swirling around. Earlier in the revolver game, it was coming across the field into our faces. From the bay, into land. Now it's going from land to bay. Bravo will be pulling upwind this point, it seems. Jake Juzak with the pull. It hits just in bounds. Karlinski is going to tap it in on the sideline. Karlinski up to Raider. Raider back playing with Sakai after being on the next gen tour. And Raider hucks to Phil Murray. Phil Murray can't lay out to get it. That throw rode the wind a little bit, came out pretty hot. Phil Murray couldn't track it down. Bravo has a disc with a chance to get the game's first break. Jack McShane walks it to the line. McShane being marked by Rifkin. We see McShane going deep immediately. Quick movement, he finds Henry Conker. Dumps it off to Bishop. Gets Jake Juzak, and he goes back to Conquer for the first break was, of the game. That was David Belsheim with the first goal. Belsheim catches it. Inside uh, break yes. to number 17. Can't really see from that angle. Harkness was in the way. And just like we had talked about, on the first opportunity for Bravo's defense, they ripped the disc right into the wind. It looked like there's some Sockeye players there to make the play, but it just gets over their head. Just rode the wind just right. 
Now Sakai offense having to work their way upwind. Spencer Wallace, Chris Gesedner, Danny Karlinski, Nate Castine, Matt Rader, Moses Rifkin, and Mike Caldwell. It's a big point for Bravo to get the break upwind. If it gets more windy today, the upwind breaks will be huge. Jake Juzak with a pull for Bravo. Codwell singles his team is ready. Nate Casting receives the pull. Nice to see Casting back out on the field. He had an injury, wasn't able to play in next gen's game. Castine with the disc in the middle of the field, moves it to Karlinski. Back to Castine, up to Mike Caldwell. Mike Caldwell just seems ageless for Sockeye. He's been doing it for 10, 15 years. Spencer Wallace in the middle of the field, almost deed by Gregerson. Karlinski looking up line. Can't find it, Kosednar to Karlinski. Lots of quick movement here from Sakai. Lots of handler movement, up line. Cutting around behind person with the field, Jackson back to, or Spencer Wallace back to Castine. Rifkin up to Karlinski. Lots of touches for Karlinski and Castine this point. Casting flips it up to Kasednar. Kasednar holding. Finds Karlinski. It looks like Sakai calls timeout, and they do. It's the first timeout of the game. So the teams take a timeout, and we will also be taking our first timeout. Back from the timeout, Karlinski finds Kosednar. Kosednar around to Caldwell. Caldwell with the push pass to Wallace. Looks like there's some discussion. They think Mike Caldwell was in. Sockeye players celebrating. Bravo not convinced, pointing the other way. Lots of discussion here. Nearly an incredible grab by Spencer Wallace. Players decide the disc will be going back to Mike Caldwell. Certainly a veteran throw there, flips it up. Caldwell with the disc marked by Jake Juzak. Looking into the end zone now for his dump. Up the line to Chris Kosednar. Sakai scores. Doesn't let Bravo get any more breaks. Lots of handler movement on that point. 20 plus passes on that possession for Sockeye. Moving up wind, Johnny Bravo did a good job containing those deep shots, forcing a lot of movements from the handlers. Early on in this game, it's much different than the game we watched earlier, where Chain and Revolver seem to jack it at will, particularly Chain. Here, players moving it a little bit more methodically, playing more possession style ultimate. The Sockeye of old had the big receivers of Alex Nord, Chase Sparling Becker, Sammy CK, Mike Caldwell. Able to take those deep shots when they were there. The Sockeye team much shorter than that Sockeye team. 
and their style of ultimate definitely shows that. Reed Koss set to pull for Sockeye. Big outside in, Blady pull coming down. Yielded by Parker Krug. Goes up to Josh Ackley. Jimmy Mickle, first pass in the middle of the field, and Mickle turns around, immediately goes to Jesse Ream. Jesse Ream taking Reed Koss in front of the disc and then dropping out. Very classic move in the wind like this. He just read that better than Reed Koss. Reed Koss goes up big. It's just too early. It hung in the wind just enough. Jesse Ream scores the third goal of the game for Bravo. Some updates from around the tournament here in Pool B. Ring of Fire is one and one right now. They had beaten Machine earlier today, but they lost in a close game to Boost Mobile 12-11. Ring is playing with a very truncated roster. Only 15 players with them. Truncated? Uh, shortened. Shortened, all right. Also I just wanted to make sure I knew <laughs> what that meant. Uh, cut down, cut if you down. will. All right. Um, of course, uh, Ring was at Chesapeake last weekend. Two tournaments in a row. It's hard to get enough healthy players, enough players able to make the trip all the way across the country. Player they're missing from the next gen tour, Tommy Lamar would have helped out. Juzak with the pull, five yards deep of the end zone. Kosednar bringing it to the brick. Sakai in a horizontal. Two handlers back are Holt and Karlinski. Holt on the backhand side, Karlinski on the near side. Sednar marked by Jack McShane. Karlinski receives it on the sideline. Back to Sednar in the middle of the field. Over to Adam Holt. Over to Wallace. Wallace unhappy about that foul. Calls foul, no contest. Coming in on zero. Wallace to Kasednar. Kasednar with a little lefty dump to Karlinski. Raider up the field. Raider the air bounce to Murray. Kasednar outside the end zone. Another lefty from Kasednar to Karlinski. More handler movement back to Karsednar. And Holt. Catches and fist spikes. Looks like there was a pick called. Disc will be going back. Lots of short, quick, little passes. Right in those tiny spaces. Kosednar just flips it to Holt. And Kosednar to Karlinski up the line. Sockeye scores. They tie the game at threes. Bravo is poaching out in the lanes a lot, which is cutting, cutting down the cutters downfield. It's not allowing them to throw downfield to their cutters. It's forcing Sockeye have a lot of short, quick passes. That has been the style of play that we've seen from them over the last couple years. In a wind like this, I think it's definitely to Johnny Bravo's benefit to force a lot of those handler passes. We see a few of them when they're, when Sokka is working it up, kind of bounce in the air. They have to go up strong to catch it, make a play on it, save it from going over everyone's heads. Especially those throws that don't have a lot of spin. If they get caught in this wind, they're just going to jump up or get pushed.
push down and your hand it might hit the bottom of your hand and you can't grab onto it. Mm -hmm. The more passes that Bravo can force Sakai to throw, the better. On the line for Sakai. D-line, we have Ali Lennon, Frank Barrick, Sam Harkness, Eddie Feely, new player on the team, Matty Zemmel, Joe Sefton, and Reed Koss. And Parker Krug touching the disc before it goes out of bounds. He's going to take that all the way at the back of his end zone. High pressure situation, especially with the disc in the corner. Still on that back line. Gets it up to Westbrook. And Westbrook just getting it out, goes to Mickle. Mickle going up strong, getting it over Joe Sefton. And then taking it deep, finding Joe Durst in the end zone. Very fortunate point for Johnny Bravo there. Looks <laughs> like BJ or Joe almost had that. Jimmy just snatches it right before, finds Joe Durst in the end zone. Jimmy, of course, coming off his second next-gen tour. Captain of Colorado's Mama Bird, played U.S. Junior Worlds. He's a well-seasoned Frisbee player, <laughs> ultimate player. Definitely has a lot more experience than many elite club players. This year playing with Johnny Bravo, he's playing on the offensive line a lot more. I believe they're using him in the defense last year. But with Johnny Bravo's returning a lot of players from last year to this year, and they've made a few personnel changes. Jack McShane, um, and Ryan Farrell are two players that were playing offensive line last year. This year, they've been switched to the defensive line, and it's the little changes like that that have been made in the Bravo rotation and, and their line calling has proved to be very successful. They are 11 and 0 now, 12 and no, 11 and 0 this year in two tournaments. Karlinski to Holt. Holt still with the Frisbee. Finds Rifkin, another one of those ageless sockeye cutters. He rips the disc to Vero Titkum. Vero just outside the end zone. Danny Karlinski with a drop. Very uncharacteristic of him. Normally a sure-handed player. Now Justin Silva with the disc. Salvia. 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 He calls a foul, no contest from Karlinski. You can clearly see he was hacked before the disc left his hand. Then a low throw to Jake Juzak. Juzak forcing it a little there. Looking for a high release backhand, I wouldn't quite call it a huck, but just about as far as you want to throw that throw. Mid-range leading throw. He had the wind on his side, so it was able to carry all the way in front of Jackson Clore. But just a tough shot. Clore was cutting for the backhand in the opposite corner. Now Kasednar with the disc to Raider. Raider rips a low backhand to Rifkin. Not quite. A very unfortunate turn for Sakai on the goal line. It was the first time we've seen their offense really be able to get a good huck off going upwind. That time, they try to go for it again. Matt Rader just a little bit off target. And Bra Johnny Bravo has another chance to score. A huck immediately to Jackson Kluwer. And he reels that one in right past Matt Raider. As we were talking about defensive line for Johnny Bravo. Bravo, Johnny Bravo. Definitely liking to go deep. 
That was the first break of the game. Second break of the game for Bravo. They're now up 5-3. Jackson Kluwer with a goal. He's been a hot player for Bravo this year. He's captaining this year? Not captaining. I, I don't believe so. He might be captaining at Colorado Mama Bird, um, where he is going to be a senior. Right. But here on Bravo, he was at the U.S. Open. He had the second most goals behind Hilka Snyder. Hilka Snyder not at the tournament today. He will be back with Bravo for the series. But Jackson Kluwer just a very good fast cutter that's really come into his own on this team. Knows when to cut well. Yeah, when he puts his head down, he's going deep. He's going deep. Gets those legs churning, runs that disc down. Raider looked like he almost could have made a play on that, but it was just out of his reach. <laughs> Captain Ryan Farrell set to pull. Good floaty pull going upwind, fielded by Holt. Karlinski scoopers over the top to Wallace. And Wallace puts a backhand, Holt going deep from the handler spot. And he gets past his defender. No problem for Sakai to score on the downwind point. You see that pretty frequently from Sakai. Adam Holt streaking deep from that handler position. He's got throws. He's also a weapon downfield. Adam Holt is no small handler. Not at all. Sakai down two breaks. We are now back for the offense going downwind. Sakai's defense, if they need to get back into this game, need to break an upwind point. Fits of line for Sakai, Matt Sewell, Todd Sliva, Reed Koss, Sam Harkness, Frank Barrick, Joe Sefton, and Jacob Spidel. Reed Koss with the upwind pull. It's going to flow out of bounds. Bravo will take it at the brick mark. It's his third pole this game that's gone out of bounds. Josh Ackley, Callahan winner in 2004, going to take the disc to the brick. That same year that Ackley won the Callahan Award, University of Colorado's Mama Bird won the national championship over California, I believe. Reed Koss gets the D and puts it right away to Sam Harkness. Wow, an incredibly athletic play from Sam Harkness. We're definitely gonna get a couple looks at that. I had almost forgotten which team was on offense because I saw three Johnny Bravo guys going down there. Koss not <laughs> wasting any time. His arm <laughs> almost looks like he dislocates his shoulder. However, his shoulder remains intact, and Sakai gets a goal and a break. Ties this game at fives, still down a break. It was an upwind break, big for Sakai. Great heads up play by Reed Koss in the low huck. That is. Something that we saw in the chain lightning game, 
chain and revolver. Chain's hucks just weren't getting up above the stack. Revolver really taking advantage of it to knock it down. For Sakai to get to the advantage on Bravo, they really need to shut down their deep game, find some ways to get in the lane. This point for Sakai on the line, we have Nate Castine, Matt Rader, Joe Sefton, Frank Barich, Barrick, Todd Sliva, Reed Koss, and Matt Skip Sewell. Raider with a huge blade right in the back corner of the end zone. Disc is sailing. Joe Sefton gets the D and Frank Barrick scores the goal. Sockeye with their second break in a, in a row. The fish are feeling it. Two passes for Sockeye and two breaks. It is that easy for their D-line. That upwind throw. That air bounce that just bounced a little too much. Josh Ackley couldn't get it. Sefton with the D. Almost to Callahan. Threw it three yards to Frank Barrick. Chomp, chomp, chomp. Well, wow, now this game is back on serve. Not what I was expecting to see. Sakai always been a team that rides their emotions very well. They're a very loud team on the sidelines, especially when their defense is out there. Got great communication on the line for them now. Raider, Koss, Sewell, Barrick, Silva, or Sliva, Sefton and Castine. Raiders pull just out of bounds. Ackley brings it to the line, up to the brick. Three handlers back. We have two cutters sitting on the sideline. Two cutters isolated in the middle. Interesting matchup here with Raider on Mickle. Now looks like Sockeye's in a zone. Ackley with the, with the disc. Finds Ryan Farrell over to Mickle. Mickle, Scuber back to Ackley. Ackley to Ream. Ream to Paget. Paget up the line around to Ackley. Ackley steps through back to Paget. Big pivot from Paget. Puts Koss on his back. Paget's calling foul. Koss isn't really happy with the contact, just goes right on his back. Diskin, Paget just outside the goal line to Fer Farrell. <laughs> Matt Sewell almost with the layout D. A little confusion there. Bravo scores and ties the game at sixes. Six six game to thirteen. So the next team to score will take us to halftime. Sakai going in at offense. Bravo doesn't look like they're making any big changes on their defensive line. Don't see this as a must break situation. We have Jake Juzak, 
Henry Conker, Clark Bishop, Jack McShane, Tim Morrissey's out there, David Belsheim and Josh Anderson. Sockeye working downwind. Moses Rifkin, Adam Holt, Matt Rader, Spencer Wallace, Danny Karlinski, Pharaoh Titkum, and Chris Gassednar. Karlinski in the center of the field. Moving vertical stack. Opens up Rifkin on the sideline. Wallace around to Titcomb. Centers to Karlinski. Wallace now with the disc. Sednar. Karlinski. Sednar. We're seeing that handler movement, a lot of little touches from Sakai. So cutters are having trouble getting open downfield. Titcomb gets it to Karlinski. To Holt, Karlinski. Pit called, Karlinski with the disc. Sakai falling into their red zone offense. Lefty over to Rifkin. He's not in. And a pick called. Ethan Gillette gets caught up. Marking Karlinski. Tons of touches this point for Sakai. And again, Kasedner going around, this time finding Karlinski, no problem. Sakai really likes to use their handler movement in the red zone. It creates a lot of space. Their handlers have breaks around just like that. Floats it out to space. Karlinski catches, Sakai scores. They lead 7-6. And halfway through this game, a little momentum swings for both teams. Sakai, though, able to get back on serve, take it into half. And in their halftime, we're going to see what Bravo has to say. As for myself and Jackson, we're going to take our break. We'll be back with you for the second half. Hello and welcome back to Santa Cruz. You're watching the Next Gen Network broadcast of Labor Day Ultimate. Next Gen Network broadcasts made possible thanks to our sponsorship of Elemental Technology. Elemental Technology powering our feed that is getting you the games here this weekend. Jackson, what's been happening so far in this game? Lots of handler movement. Short run from Bravo early on in the first half. Sockeye seems to have gotten the momentum back. Couple floaty throws. No hesitation from their D-line offense. It's Sockeye took half 7-6. There's Reed Koss with his fourth pull out of bounds on the day. having a lot of trouble figuring out the wind here on the field. Reed Koss just asked if he's allowed to pull from out of bounds. The answer was no. <laughs> now Ackley bringing it to the line, marked by Tyler Kinley.
finds Owen Westbrook. An ISO cut right away, looking for Ackley. Over to Parker Krug. And to Jimmy Mickle. Ethan Pollock, big player out of Indiana. Josh Ackley scores the goal. Bravo ties it at sevens. Ethan Pollock played at Cornell University. That is where he's from. Had a little lull there. Tied at sevens. Now we're gonna get some halftime talk from Bravo. Squirrel and whirl. Talking about that handler movement, quick short passes. It's definitely been the theme for Sockeye's offense, their O line offense. Not so much their D line offense, as those two breaks that they've had have been one throw. One of them was kind of a freebie. Bravo pressing a little bit, putting Jimmy Mickle out there on defense. Big point for them. Jimmy Mickle can get the pull in bounds. Karlinski receives, centers to Kosednar. Kosednar out of Carlton. Raider with his patented huge backhand fake. Casting with the disc inside to Karlinski. Karlinski floats the flick to big Matt Raider. Matt Raider toes the line. Sockeye scores. Easy point for Matt Raider. Talking about Matt Raider's backhand fake. We were talking about it on the tour earlier this summer. We were complimenting him on his nice fake, and he, as he liked to describe it, it's not that he's faking it. He is going to throw, and then at the last minute, he suddenly decides he's not really going to. Really the last to. millisecond. Yeah. So it's not really a fake, more just in the throwing motion, and then suddenly... Change of mind. Probably shouldn't throw that anymore. But that kind of mindset, yeah, I guess it's going to be very effective. It worked out on that the point. Defender, yeah. he, he had that big fake, which drew the defense in, or out, I guess, slightly. And then he busted deep from there. Ends up scoring the goal. Now Reed Koss looking to pull it inbounds. You wonder if Sakai is going to have suggest that someone else pulls. Koss confident that he can get it inbounds. This one's inbounds. Ackley with it right at the brick. Finds Mickle. Mickle back to Ackley. Ream with a drop. And Reed Cost just jacking it. Interesting decision throwing to skip deep with Jimmy Mickle there. Also Joe Hurst. Owen Westbrook with a possession saving grab over to Ream. Very unfortunate for Joe Sefton there. He was poaching, lays out huge and gets a D. However, there was a foul on the throw. No contest coming in on zero. Ream marked by Koss. Koss out of Western Washington. Mickle going up line. Marked by Skip. 
Mickle calls foul. No contest from Skip. Two highly spirited players. Little bickering there between Ackley and Barrick. Barrick feels it's 50 50. Ackley doesn't like the contact. He calls foul. Ends up as a foul contest. Frank Barrick elevates and D's it. Looked like Ackley might have gotten whacked in the face. No injury sub necessary. Tough throw on the dump going into the wind. It just catches a big gust. And that's the second time we've seen a throw going to Josh Ackley just pop up in the air. The first one being that big second break for Sockeye. From the back of the end zone, it just goes straight over Ackley's head. And then at a crucial time when Bravo is pinned on the sideline. Looks like Ackley is calling a foul. Going back to when Barrick deed it. Barrick did D it. Yeah, so, so the turnover mm -hmm. remains, but Ackley is still calling a foul, so play will go back to when the foul occurred, which all the players will go back. Three, two, one, disc is in. Just players trying are to, now allowed to move around. Trying to keep his position on the field. Surprising to not see Sakai pick up and rush it to the end zone. Barrick at the front of the stack, blanketed by Ackley. Lots of physical play. Sefton to Koss. Sockeye gets a much needed upwind break. They take the lead 9-7. Very physical play on that point between Ackley and Barrick. At first there was a little bit of arguing, but not enough to slow down play. They remain physical throughout the point. Couple of short throws from Sockeye. They take the lead 9 7. Ow. Jimmy Mickle puts it up. Parrot goes up, D's it, and elbows Ackley in the nose. Sefton up the line to Koss. Koss is fired up. Bravo's offensive line now having to work upwind in the second half. Sakai threw a zone look in their first D point of the half. We'll probably see another zone look now that Bravo has to go upwind. Matt Raider set to pull. Matt Raider looking good in that next gen hat. Matching the disc very well. Ackley in the center of the field. Sockeye throwing a three man cup. Lucky, lucky Bravo. Drop, however, there was a foul on the throw. Disc goes back to Ackley. Two captain, captains of the team, Ackley and Ryan Farrell. Sakai in a zone look. Farrell gets the hammer across field. Now Krug with the disc. Another hammer to the middle of the field, finding Westbrook. Krug finally gets through the cup. Mickle with the disc. Sakai falls into a man look.
and a travel called on Josh Ackley. Disc is going to go back. Much different look here from Sakai going in the zone. And they switch back to man. Definitely slowing down Bravo's offense. Oh, and Matt Rader, heads up play. The hammer trying to go over his head. And he's able to lay out backwards. Gets his hand on the disc. Now Sakai with a chance to break again. Reed Koss, and Reed Koss going deep. Overthrows Todd Sliver though. He almost threw that one a country mile. Not quite though. With the help of the wind. That D from Raider came because his head was up. He was watching the disc. It's definitely an advantage as a defender if you can see where the disc is. That way you can make those big acrobatic Ds. Know when the disc is behind you. Here Ackley scoovers over to Pharrell. Pharrell hammer to Clark Bishop. Bishop to Mickle. Little collision there, foul called. No contest. Everyone smiles. Mickle with the disc at zero. Mickle back to Krug. Sakai has transitioned back into their zone. And upside down throws, all point. Ackley gets fouled on the goal line, being marked by Reed Koss. It's all the way around to Mickle, and Mickle, quick throw. It's Ryan Farrell. Bravo gets one back with an upwind O point. Now they're looking at a chance to break downwind. O-line for Sakai. Rifkin, Wallace, Holtz, Caldwell, Vero Titkum, Karlinski, and Kosednar. That O-line really has not changed much over the course of the game. When you think of common, when you think of Sakai, you definitely think of Mike Caldwell and Moses Rifkin. They've been on the team, cutting on the O-line for years. They were with the team in the peak of Sakai, winning three out of four national championships. Impressive to see them play at a high level. Big pull from Jake Duzak. Because Sedner gets it on his goal line. Back to Holt. And Holt goes deep. No one there, this but there's plenty of float. <laughs> did someone catch that? <laughs> Harold Titcomb did. Came over the pack. Everyone jumps too early. And reaching over, snagging the disc. Oh, oh no. Moses Ripken and then tips Vero it, gets and it. then Vero gets it. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan Farrell not happy about Titcom on his back. A powerful stand up. <laughs> Gotta be some sort of foul call. 
Looks like it's being tapped in. Just a stoppage of play. Caldwell with his patented mohawk finds Holt. Holt marked by McShane. There was a pick call. Holt with the low around backhand to Rifkin. Then back to Rifkin. Spencer Wallace reaches out, finds Kosednar streaking across the end zone line for the goal. Sakai takes the lead 10 8. A near D there from Clark Bishop. Looks like he might have messed up his shoulder a little bit. In case you had missed some of the action and updates here in Labor Day, before this round, Double Wide was taking on Revolver. Double Wide wins that game, a close game to the end. Double Wide is now 3-0. Revolver, Chain, and Rhino are 2-1. So Revolver, Chain, and Rhino will be battling for that second spot. Revolver will take on Rhino tomorrow. Will probably be their toughest game for the rest of the rest of their pool. Rhino uh, will be taking on double wide. We'll be filming that game in the morning. Another game going on right now. Furious George up on Mad Cow 11-8. There's Josh Ackley with the disc in the middle of the field. Marked by new player Duncan Lynn. Eddie Feely with the layout block. Sockeye with a chance to break going downwind. Wow. This would really, really make it tough for Bravo to come back. Ali Lennon with the disc. Throws inside to Barrick. Barrick to Lynn. Sockeye is feeling it. Great D from Feely to set up a short field for Sakai. These upwind offensive points we knew were going to be difficult. Bravo unable to convert it. Now they are down eight to 11. And they will have to break Sakai upwind to get themselves back in this game. Sakai two points from victory. So if Bravo is going to make their move, they have to do it soon. Bravo takes a timeout, and we are also gonna take a timeout. We'll see you soon for the conclusion of Sakai and Bravo. Welcome back to the conclusion of this game between Sakai and Bravo. Sakai just broke Bravo to push their lead to three. As we talked about earlier, Saka, Sakai a team that likes to ride their emotion. They are certainly feeling some emotion right now. On the D-line for Sakai, we've got Skip Sewell, Reed Koss, Joe Sefton, Sam Harkness, Ali Lennon, Tyler Kinley, and Maddie Zemmel. On the Bravo side, their offensive line looks like Josh Ackley, Evan Paget. I 
think that's Ryan Farrell, Jimmy Mickle, Jesse Ream. It's Craig Forshee. Craig Forshee and Parker Krug to round out that line. Ackley with the disc. Sakai throws a zone. Looks like it was just for a play to stop the initial huck. Mickle now with the disc on the sideline. Sinners to Ackley. Pharrell. Forshee and Forshee turns around. Ackley is there in the end zone. A smooth offensive point for Bravo to put them at 9 to 11. But their offense isn't in trouble. It's what their D line can do in this next point. Sakai trying to break seed in the A pool. The fourth seed in the A pool, the eighth seed overall. Bravo, the number two seed overall. If Sakai is able to get this game, they will have beaten two opponents seated above them. Machine is a number two slot in Pool B. Bravo in the number one slot. And Sakai looking to reassert their power position at the national scene. Casting back on the field. Haven't seen him since the first points of the game. Finds Karlinski, then to Wallace. Wallace floats it to Raider. Raider with a one-handed snag in front of Jake Juzak. Two big bodies going up for the disc. That throw was actually tipped that Spencer Wallace threw. Raider makes a nice play to go up and grab it. Sakai trails Bra er, leads Bravo 12-9. One more point to close out the game. You think it'd be pretty smooth sailing for Sakai if they are able to beat Bravo. The rest of the pool they've beaten Machine today, and then the rest of their pool would be Mad Cow, Boost Mobile, and Ring of Fire, and Furious George tomorrow. Also Furious George. Furious George, they're 2-0 and on the day. They just beat Mad Cow 13-8. So, so far, the Northwest region making a strong case for getting three more strength bids, or two more strength bids plus their automatic bid. Mm -hmm. Reed Koss with the pull for Sockeye. That pull staying in bounds. Ryan Farrell picks up. Excuse me, Parker Krug picks up. Over to Owen Westbrook. Back to Krug. Up the line to Westbrook. Back to Krug in the middle of the field. Forehand to Ream. Back to Krug. Krug to Pollock. Ream. Paget just outside the end zone. The flick to Ethan Pollock, almost deed by Matty Zemmel. Bravo marched it up the field. Another smooth offensive point from Bravo going downwind. Excuse me, that was almost deed by Sam Harkness. 
Lots of quick movement there from Bravo. No player had it longer than stall six. Now Sakai offense, game point possession. Johnny Bravo, if they're able to get this D point, they certainly have a chance as Sakai will have to go upwind to end the game. But so far, neither team has really been struggling on their downwind possessions. Bravo putting in a strong offensive line. They bring Jimmy Mickle over to the line. Jackson Kluwer. On the line for Sakai, Raider, Holt, Wallace, Karlinski, Caldwell, Castine, and Bill Murray. Pull from Jimmy Mickle. Nice float, lands on the sideline. Caldwell has it on the sideline. Being pick. marked by Mickle, pick called on the field. I expect Bravo to be playing a lot of physical points. We have an injury there, it's Ethan Gillett coming out, Ryan Farrell subbing in for him. Sakai does not take any subs. They have who they want in. Now Raider with it, with the flick to Spencer Wallace. Hits him in stride, Sockeye upsets Bravo, 13-10. Nice easy downwind flick from Raider to Wallace. Wallace makes sure he's in, gets two feet down. I was talking about this good feeling they have, and they must be feeling it right now. Sakai moves to 2 0. Bravo. Is that their first game today? That was their second game. They, second they game. fall to 1 and 1. They had beaten Mad Cow earlier in the day. Right, right. And had the bye. Well, exciting game from both teams. Sakai gets out on top. We will be back here at 4.45 to watch some women's action here women's at Women's Ultimate. Day. I'm excited. M Molly Brown from Colorado to take on Seattle Riot, Riot, also from S Seattle. So we are going to watch the women's version of this game. We'd like to thank... Our videographers today, Brian Bedord and Aki Odera. Our director, Vin Bowie. Replay machine operator, Kimber Coles. Of course, executive producer, Kevin Menderhout. As for myself, I'm Topher Davis. And I'm Jackson Kelsey. We'll see you soon, Ultimate World.